गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी एंड थैंक यू नव्या फॉर ए वॉम इंट्रोडक्शन इट इज इंडीड अ प्रिविलेज टू बी द पार्ट ऑफ द गैलेक्सी ऑफ स्पीकर्स इन द सेकेंड एडिशन ऑफ द टेडेक्स इवेंट ऑफ आई एल एस लॉ कॉलेज आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट यू हैव चोजन दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ पैरल यूनिवर्स and parallel uh, and parallel reality and uh, you want uh, the audience the college want the audience to um, 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 take it, take into account uh, the vulnerable groups and uh, their issues um, a, a, a topic which is often uh, ignored and overlooked now uh, can we really say that there is a parallel universe or there should be a parallel universe and i remember a very interesting quote from ravindranath tagore when he says everything comes to us that belongs to us if we create capacity to receive it so what is important the context is that if we are able to eliminate the barriers if we are able to uh, Uh, if we are able to combat the inhibitions in our mindsets about uh, those who are different from us then probably there will not be any necessity uh, to create parallel universe but looked at from other angle how far is it correct to entertain the assumption that a thing or a particular transaction should be performed only in a particular manner for example how far is it appropriate to uh, assume that you can read only if you have eyesight you can walk only if you have legs you can speak only if you have speech ability are we trying to entertain are we trying to maintain fixed assumptions are we trying to entertain fixed notions about Uh, the actions are we thereby ignoring not uh, accounting for uh, different things innovations uh, that is the issue now uh, when i look at the design of the entire world be it physical design be it political design be it economic design my understanding is that this world has not been built taking into account or keeping in mind disabled people and therefore it is inherently ableist and because it is inherently ableist we entertain a very monolithic approach towards doing things and therefore uh, we have uh, the so called objectivity okay if you cannot see then you cannot read what is ableism before i Uh, uh, respond to the assumption it is important to very briefly allude to uh, the meaning of ableism ableism is the discrimination of and social prejudice against people with disabilities based on the belief uh, that typical abilities are superior so when we uh, provide or when we grant ascendancy to uh, certain abilities over others when we assume that certain abilities are uh, better than others then uh, ableism creeps in at its heart ableism is rooted in the assumption that disabled people require uh, fixing and uh, and uh, and uh, Uh, defines people uh, based on uh, their disability just as casteism define people based on their caste and sexism define people based on their sex so it's a dogma basically the uh, the main uh, uh, function of ableism is to undermine uh, the abilities of people with disabilities and to uh, create a very negative picture uh, of theirs and Uh, perpetuate the myth that they are lesser human beings 
Now question arises, are people with disabilities really lesser human beings? A very important question which needs to be uh, answered is, if on other grounds, if on other, uh, 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 if certain other grounds are recognized that's constitutionally irrelevant, legally irrelevant, why disability is often not considered as constitutionally and legally irrelevant? Why even today, most of the constitutions around the world do not have provisions to uh, either prohibit or combat discrimination on the ground of disability? The simple and the plain answer to the to this question is constitutional ableism. Most of the constitutions still uh, recognize disability as a natural difference. And uh, still the belief is entertained by most of the lawmakers that it is okay to distinguish between disabled and non-disabled because the former are naturally different from the latter. I think a very uh, interesting point uh, which I want to allude here is made by uh, Justice Chandrachud. Justice Chandrachud uh, in a lecture, uh, he very aptly remarked that exclusion against the disabled may or may not be deliberate but inclusion must always be so he emphasized he combated this notion of difference and he emphasized that disabled people are also they are also uh, uh, people uh, with dignity they they also uh, are the bearers uh, with dignity another important point which he made is worth uh, highlighting. He stated that the nature has a unique method of compensating what it deprives. So suppose I am deprived of my eyesight. Nature can definitely compensate by giving me sensation in my finger. So I can cannot read by my eye, but, but I can read by my finger. I can read braille. Similarly, if nature has deprived my ability to walk, it is possible for me to use wheelchair. If the nature has deprived my ability to speak, it is possible for me to use sign language, to use uh, lip reading. In other words, it is, it is very much uh, possible uh, for me or for all those uh, vulnerable uh, people uh, who are unnecessarily perceived as lesser human beings to conceive a parallel universe, to conceive a universe which would uh, provide us the same amount of respect and the dignity as entertained by uh, the non-disabled people. Now, uh, why, why ableism persist? What are the main causes of ableism? So, if I were to Look at constitutional ableism. Most of the constitutions still recognize physical and mental disability as one of the grounds of ineligibility to hold public offices. And Indian constitution is no exception. When you look at discursive ableism, look at the kind of language uh, we use. Love is blind. right? How love can be blind? I fail to understand. Don't do it blindly. Don't give lame excuse. So what we are doing, we are trying to trivialize the disability by using metaphors as if disability is a marker of irrationality. This is discursive ableism. Economic ableism. You assume without any objective uh, barometer, without any objective criteria that people with disability are ineligible to be productive units of society as if they don't have the potency to uh, be employees. They don't have the potency to be employers. They don't have potency to be entrepreneur. And this assumption again is without any basis. This assumption is clearly and purely driven by ableism. Then political ableism, everything about us without us. 
what happens everything about us without us everything without disability will be done by non disabled without caring for their experiences take two recent examples a recent judgment of the supreme court wherein court has uh, passed an order you know uh, directing the film institute of film and television institute of india to provide admission to people with color blindness court very categorically stated that art should not be conformist but when you dig the process when you find out the process of the adjudication the committee whose opinion court largely cited while coming to this conclusion the committee does not reflect the experiences of the people with color blindness so are you really trying to embrace the people with color blindness or are you trying to achieve uniformity in the guise of equality equality is not uniformity equality is respect for this difference equality is equanimity so that you you strike a delicate balance between uh, both uh, equality and diversity another example in a in a very interesting judgment a, a, a very disappointing judgment i mean interesting judgment uh, surendra mohan's case court held that because a blind person lacks sight he cannot read and he cannot write again on what basis you are entertaining the assumption on what what basis certain judges are holding this belief that blind people because of their inability to see they cannot read or they cannot write simply because they have not bothered to consult blind people they have not bothered bothered to uh, instill their uh, reasoning with the experiences of the blind people therefore this is a very dangerous political ableism because you are trying to do everything about us without us whereas the mantra after the enactment of the united nation convention on rights of persons with disabilities everything about us uh, 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 everything about about us should be done with us nothing about us without us that is the mantra nothing about us without us now uh, uh, the next important aspect is uh, how to nurture difference how to ensure that people with disability they are uh, their status is elevated they are recognized as the equal members of uh, society i think uh, uh, if i were to uh, uh, give uh, some solutions firstly we have to raise our consciousness and consciousness has to be risen not only by the disabled people of the disabled people but also of the non disabled people we have to understand that uh, disability and non disability are merely the two ends of the continuum all of us are some way or the other disabled not knowing english also is a disability not being able to drive is also a disability but then these disabilities being disabilities uh common to majority we overlook these disabilities but on the other hand not being able to see is perceived as a very uh, natural disability because you know uh, ability to see is something which is not lacked by majority it is only uh, uh, lacked by uh, a few people few uh, a very small percentage of the society but substantively speaking what is the difference between not being able to see and not being able to speak english both are inhibitions but societally under the influence of ableism because not being able to see is a an, an inability which is which is not a typical inability so typical inabilities are not perceived as disabilities whereas those inabilities which are atypical they are perceived as disabilities therefore we have to we have to engage in consciousness raising and ensure that this so called distinction between typical uh, inabilities and atypical inabilities is done away with and uh, 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 we start entertaining the assumption that okay everybody is disabled okay some disabilities are uh, visible others are invisible 
Now to conclude, therefore, I would like to argue that, you know, all of us, mostly the majority, majority uh, uh, enjoy a lot of privileges, maybe unintentionally uh, and unwittingly. Uh, uh, the, the privileges are enjoyed by majority, but privilege, the, the majority must be mindful of the fact that it is enjoying all these privileges at the cost of minorities and particularly all the able-bodied people are entertaining privileges at the cost of disabled people. Look at the design of roads, look at the design of vehicles, look at the design of toilets. For example, when you construct your house, do you provide any leeway for entry of wheelchair? Do you provide leeway for uh, uh, the sign language system if somebody turns speech, speech disabled uh, sooner or later in your family? So my point is, apart from consciousness raising, we have to also ensure that we, we try to uh, mitigate the disproportionate distribution of privileges. We try to undo the uh, you know hegemony of law tilted in favor of the able-bodied. Uh, in short, I would like to say that if you want to nurture intimacy, if you want to nurture equanimity, then start celebrating difference. Don't try to undermine somebody because he is different. Try to celebrate with him his difference or her difference. Thank you very much.